When Charlie McButton Lost Power Written by Suzanne Collins Illustrated by Mike Lester Genre This narrative poem tells a humorous story. The author uses imagery to help readers experience the way things look, sound, smell, or feel. What details from the poem create an image for you? Charlie McButton had likes and like-nots. The things that he liked involve handsets and bots, computerized games where he battled bad creatures. The things he liked not didn't have blow-up features. Then one day, a thunderstorm blew into town and brought his tech empire tumbling down. A lightning bolt struck an electrical tower and Charlie McButton, his whole world lost power. He looked left, he looked right, and his heart filled with dread. The TV, the lights, and his clock were all dead. He jumped to his feet, his lungs gasping for air. The room spun around and he clung to his chair. He tried to cry, help, but just managed to squeak. The blackout had blacked out his power to speak. Thank goodness his mother had ears like a bat. She came to his room and she gave him a pat. Oh, Charlie, she said, picking up on his fears. The lights will come back when the bad weather clears. You'll have to find something without plugs to play. Read a book, clean your room, sing a song, model clay. Could anything be duller than clay? Soggy gray clay on a soggy gray day. He hated the way the clay got under his nails and how he could only make snowmen and snails. He dove for a gadget he'd outgrown last spring. It was handheld, outdated, not much of a thing. But he clutched the old toy like a lifeline that day. See, it ran on one battery. The size? Triple A. He flicked the on-off switch to on double quick. But no happy humming sound followed the click. He unlatched a hatch and his blood turned to ice. The battery is gone from my backup device. World records were set in the 10-meter dash as away down the hallway he flew like a flash, seeking one battery, just one triple A, that would rescue one boy from a gray day of clay. But just when his search nearly drove him insane, he ran past the bedroom of Isabel Jane. His three-year-old sister was happily walking, a doll back and forth, and the doll, it was talking. Now, dolls didn't talk on their own as a rule. They needed power source, some kind of fuel. In less than a second, he'd made his decision. Call it bad judgment, a real lack of vision. Somehow his head didn't warn of his folly. And Charlie McButton, he pounced on that dolly. He plucked out his prize through the baby doll's dress. And Il Isabel Jane made a sound of distress. It was just a short walk to the foot of the stair where resided the McButton timeout time chair. To add to the fun of his term in the seat, Isabel Jane came to play at his feet. And Isabel Jane, the battery queen, had more triple A's than he'd ever seen. They powered her puppies, they powered her clocks, they powered her talkative alphabet blocks. Assaulted by non-stop mechanical clatter, Charlie McButton got madder and madder. He snapped at his sis from his timeout time zone. How come you can't ever just leave me alone? 
Her eyes filled with tears and she gave them a rub. She went to the bathroom and hid in the tub. Then Charlie McButton felt totally rotten and couldn't help thinking some things he'd forgotten. Mainly he thought that for sisters that toddle, Isabel Jane was a pretty good model. She clearly adored him. She didn't have fleas. At dinner, she'd secretly eat up his peas. And sometimes, although he'd most hotly deny it, he liked to just sit there beside her in quiet, wrapped up in a blanket, washing TV, her head on his shoulder, her foot on his knee. He sat and he thought and he stared at the rain. When his timeout was done, he found Isabel Jane. From the edge of the tub, she gave him a peek. So he said, hey, are we playing hide and go seek? She was happy at once and ran into the hall, as she loved playing hide and go seek most of all. They took turns being it and counting to ten, they hid in the plants and the guinea pig pen. And when he found Isabel Jane in her quilt, they decided a big blanket fort should be built. Then the gloom made him think about dragons and spells, so Charlie became the great wizard McSmells. And Isabel Jane, who desired a role, magically changed to his faithful old troll. Between tracking down dragons and brewing up lizards and handling the day-to-day -day business of wizards, like forging his faithful old troll a new sword, Charlie McButton forgot to be bored. At supper they ate under real candlelight. The daytime had melted right into the night. And after they'd all been asleep for an hour, the world came alive with a big surge of power. Oh, it's finally back, Charlie thought with a grin. Tomorrow I'll wake up and I can plug in. But another thought hit him he couldn't explain. I might also find dragons with Isabel Jane.